The Little Prince. When the narrator was six years old, he saw a picture in a book about the jungle. The picture showed a boa constrictor swallowing an animal. He drew his own picture of the boa from the outside, but when he showed it to adults, they all thought it was a hat. He tried to explain that it was a boa constrictor with an elephant inside, but they didn't understand. So, he stopped drawing and decided to focus on things that adults found important, like geography and history. He became a pilot, but always felt alone because he couldn't find anyone who understood his drawing. He realized that grown-ups often lack imagination. One day, his plane crashes in the Sahara Desert. He is alone with little water and tries to fix his engine. Suddenly. A small boy with golden hair appears and asks him to draw a sheep. The man is surprised because he is in the middle of the desert, far from people. The boy keeps asking for a sheep, so the man draws the boa constrictor instead. But the boy says he doesn't want a boa with an elephant inside. He wants a sheep. The man tries several times to draw a sheep, but the boy doesn't like any of them. Finally, the man draws a box and says the sheep is inside. The boy is happy with this and accepts it. The man learns that the boy is from another planet. But the boy doesn't answer his questions directly. He asks about the man's plane and is amazed that it can fly. The boy laughs when the man says he fell from the sky. The boy also asks if the man came from another planet, but he doesn't explain more about himself. The man is curious about the boy's origin, but doesn't learn much right away. The man slowly discovers that the boy comes from a tiny planet, no bigger than a house. He believes the boy's planet is asteroid B612, which was discovered by a Turkish astronomer. At first, people didn't believe the astronomer because he wore traditional Turkish clothes. Later, when he dressed in European clothes, everyone accepted his discovery. The man explains that adults care more about facts and numbers than the important things in life. Like emotions or the beauty of life, children understand these things better. The boy talks about his planet and the danger of baobab trees. On his tiny planet, baobabs start as small seeds but grow into huge trees if not removed early. The boy explains that if baobabs grow too large, they could destroy his planet. So, every day he checks for baobabs and pulls them out when they are still small. The man compares this to stopping problems in life before they become too big. The boy asks the man to draw a picture of baobabs so children on Earth can understand the danger. The little prince tells the man that he loves sunsets. On his tiny planet, because it is so small, 
He can watch many sunsets in one day by moving his chair. One day, he watched the sunset 44 times. He explains that sunsets are special when you feel sad, and they bring him comfort. The man realizes that the boy might be carrying a lot of sadness in his heart. One day, the boy asks if sheep eat flowers, and the man says yes. The boy becomes very sad and asks if sheep eat flowers with thorns. The man says yes again, but he doesn't know why flowers have thorns. The boy gets angry and says that flowers are weak and use their thorns to protect themselves. He explains that his flower is very special to him and that a single sheep could destroy it in one bite. The man understands how important the flower is to the boy and promises to draw a muzzle for the sheep to protect the flower. The boy tells the man more about his flower. The flower appeared on his planet one day, and it was different from the other simple flowers. This flower took a long time to bloom, and when it finally did, it was beautiful but also proud and demanding. She asked for special care, like water and protection from drafts. The boy loved her, but he didn't always understand her. She boasted about her thorns and said they would protect her from tigers, even though there were no tigers on his planet. The boy didn't know how to deal with her pride, and this made him sad. Before the boy left his planet, he took care of it one last time. He cleaned out his volcanoes, which he used for heating his breakfast. He also pulled out the last baobab shoots to protect his planet. He felt sad leaving his flower. But the flower finally admitted that she loved him and told him not to worry about her. She was proud and didn't want him to see her cry, so she wished him happiness and told him to go. The boy left, feeling a mix of sadness and love for his flower. The little prince visits several planets on his journey. The first planet is ruled by a king who believes he has power over everything. The king orders the little prince to do simple things, like sit down or yawn, but his orders don't make much sense. The king says he rules over all the stars, but the little prince realizes that the king has no real power. The king offers to make the little prince a judge or a minister, but the little prince decides to leave because the king's planet is too small and there is no one to rule. The little prince then visits a planet inhabited by a conceited man. The conceited man wants everyone to admire him. He asks the little prince to clap his hands so that he can tip his hat in return. The little prince plays along for a while but soon gets bored. The conceited man only cares about being admired and doesn't really connect with others. The little prince leaves, feeling that conceited people are strange. Next, the little prince visits a planet where a drunkard lives. 
The drunkard drinks to forget his shame. The little prince asks why he drinks, and the drunkard says he drinks because he is ashamed of drinking. The little prince finds this very sad and puzzling because the man is stuck in a cycle of drinking and shame, with no way out. The little prince then meets a businessman who spends all his time counting stars. The businessman believes he owns the stars because he was the first to count them. He thinks owning stars makes him rich. The little prince doesn't understand how anyone can own stars, but the businessman doesn't care. He only counts them and says he will buy more stars if he finds them. The little prince finds the businessman's life empty and meaningless because he doesn't do anything with the stars. The next planet the little prince visits is home to a lamplighter. The lamplighter's job is to light a street lamp every night and turn it off every morning. However, the planet spins so quickly that the lamplighter has to light and turn off the lamp every minute. The little prince finds this strange, but likes the lamplighter because he is the only one who does something useful for others. The little prince wants to stay with him, but the planet is too small for two people. The little prince then visits a planet where a geographer lives. The geographer writes down information about seas, mountains, and rivers, but he never goes out to explore. He depends on explorers to tell him what the world looks like. The little prince asks him to record his flower, but the geographer explains that he only records things that last forever. He says flowers are ephemeral, meaning they are temporary and can disappear. This makes the little prince sad because he realizes that his flower could die. The geographer suggests that the little prince visit Earth. The little prince arrives on Earth and is amazed by how large it is compared to the planets he visited. He learns that there are many people on Earth, including kings, businessmen, and others like the ones he met. The little prince wonders what kind of people he will meet on earth. The little prince meets a snake in the desert. The snake tells him that he is very powerful and can send people back to the earth. The little prince doesn't understand at first. But the snake hints that he can help the little prince return to his planet one day. The snake speaks in riddles, but the little prince isn't afraid. He is curious about the snake's powers. The little prince continues walking through the desert and meets a simple flower with only three petals. The flower tells him that there are very few people in the desert and that humans are hard to find. She explains that the wind blows people around because they don't have roots. The little prince is surprised by how different people are on earth. The little prince climbs a tall mountain hoping to see the entire planet. He calls out, but only hears his own echo.
The little prince is disappointed because he thought he would find people, but instead he finds the mountain empty and harsh. He realizes that people on Earth are different from what he imagined. After walking for a long time, the little prince finds a garden full of roses. He is shocked because his flower told him she was the only one of her kind. Now, he sees thousands of roses that look just like her. He feels sad because he thought his flower was unique, and now he realizes she is just one of many. The little prince lies down in the grass and cries, feeling lost and confused. While the little prince is lying in the grass, a fox appears. The fox asks the little prince to tame him. The fox explains that taming means creating a special bond with someone. When two beings tame each other, they become important to one another. The little prince realizes that his flower has tamed him, and he has tamed her. The fox teaches him that love and friendship are what make someone or something unique. The fox tells the little prince a secret. It is only with the heart that one can see rightly. What is essential is invisible to the eye. The little prince meets a railway switchman. The switchman's job is to sort travelers into different trains and send them off. The little prince notices that people are always in a hurry, rushing from one place to another, but they don't seem to know where they are going or what they are looking for. The switchman agrees, saying that people are rarely satisfied with where they are. The little prince observes that only children seem to enjoy life because they focus on small, happy things like playing with a toy or watching the scenery. The little prince meets a merchant selling pills that stop thirst. The merchant explains that these pills save people 53 minutes a week because they don't need to drink water. The little prince finds this strange and says that if he had an extra 53 minutes, he would spend it walking slowly to a spring to drink fresh water. The merchant represents people who always want to save time, but the little prince values the experience of doing simple, meaningful things. The little prince and the man, the pilot, have been in the desert for eight days. The man has run out of water and is worried they won't survive. The little prince suggests they go and find a well together, even though it seems unlikely to find one in the desert. As they walk, the little prince talks about how people rush through life without understanding what is important. He says that people no longer know what they are looking for because they are too focused on saving time. After walking for a long time, they find a well, and the man realizes that the water they drink is special because they discovered it together through their effort and friendship. As the man and the little prince drink the water from the well, the little prince says that what makes things important is invisible, like the love we have for others. He explains that just like the stars or the desert, 
It is not what we see that matters, but what we feel. The man fixes his airplane engine, and the little prince tells him that it is time for him to return to his planet. He speaks about his journey in a mysterious way, hinting that the snake will help him. The man becomes worried, understanding that the little prince may be talking about his death, but the little prince reassures him and seems calm. The little prince meets the snake in the desert at night. The snake bites the little prince, and he falls to the ground quietly. The man reaches him, but it is too late. The little prince tells the man not to be sad and explains that his body will stay on earth, but his spirit will return to his tiny planet and his flower. The little prince says that his flower needs him, and now that he has learned so much from his journey, he is ready to go home. The man feels heartbroken as he watches the little prince's body lying still on the ground. The man reflects on what happened six years after the little prince's disappearance. He misses the little prince deeply but knows that the little prince is now back on his planet, caring for his flower. The man sometimes worries about whether the sheep might have eaten the flower, but he reminds himself that the little prince is with her and would protect her. The man asks the readers to think of the little prince whenever they look at the stars, imagining that he might be living on one of them, smiling and watching over his rose.